Hello, my name is Carlo Guerrero and I'm an undergraduate in the Chemical Engineering program at the University of Connecticut. This is a presentation on heavy metals and ground and surface waters for the Foundations of Engineering class. Now, as an introduction to this presentation, I will note the paper that acted as the direction for my research. The paper was presented at the 2008 ALKI conference. The paper was titled, Chemical Speciation of Heavy Metals in Ground and Surface Waters. Now, the goal of this presentation is to give the audience an understanding of modern-day water testing with a focus on heavy metals and the recent water survey conducted in India in the paper. I'm going to start by giving you some background information so that you'll be able to understand the material better. First, we're going to look at chemical speciation followed by heavy metals and finally pollution of ground and surface waters. Speciation analysis is the analytical activity of examining a sample, in this case water, to identify the, or measure the quantities of the individual chemical species in the sample. Chemical species are specific forms of elements, for example, molecular structures, oxidation state, and isotopic composition. Speciation of an element is the distribution of the element in the chemical species of a system. Heavy metals is an ill-defined subset of elements that exhibit metallic properties. There is no consensus of an exact meaning, but in the context of the paper I researched, it means a set of common transition metals such as copper, lead, and zinc that are a cause of environmental pollution. Some of them can be dangerous to your health and to the environment. Some can cause corrosion, be carcinogenic, toxic, and among other things, affect the nervous system. These metals are introduced into the environment through a number of sources, including lead and petrol, industrial effluents, and the leaching of metal ions from the soil into lakes and rivers by acid rain. There is a reason we are concerned with the levels of heavy metals in water. Two examples of the dangers of heavy metals are the Kometko disaster and Minamata disease. Kometko's illegal construction and use of a secret discharge pipe which CEO Dennis L. Farron and others used to deliberately pump hundreds of tons of heavy metal waste in the Mississippi River from 1986 to 1996. Investigations showed that the secret pipe had been active for 10 years. A large area of the wetland was contaminated with zinc oxide, lead, cadmium, and other pollutants at several times the threshold for a public health hazard. Visible evidence of the contamination extended five feet down into the bed of Long Lake on property owned by Cometco. Farron is now an international fugitive and one of the Environmental Protection Agency's most wanted environmental crimi criminals. Minimana disease is caused by mercury poisoning. The symptoms start with muscle weakness, narrowing of vision, but can progress to insanity, paralysis, coma, and death. The mercury makes into waterways through industrial waste and then bioaccumulates in shellfish. Okay, and now we will return to the paper of focus. In the paper, it was discussed that metal speciation in natural waters is of increasing interest and importance because of toxicity, bioavailability, and environmental mobility. Toxicity is the degree to which a substance is able to damage an exposed organism. Bioavailability refers to the fraction of the substance that makes it into a systematic circulation. Environmental availability is the substance's ability to travel and spread. The study aims to determine the distribution of chemical species of dissolved heavy metals in shallow and deep aquifers and surface waters from Budanala Stream and Sutledge Rivers from village Wallapur of Punjab, northwest India. Now I will show you the two testing locations on the north end of India. The first is the Nala Stream. The second is the Sutledge River. Before sampling, the water was drawn for half an hour to empty the hand pump and two well pipes to collect the fresh water from the shallow and deep aquifers. For surface water, sample were samples were collected from the center of Budanala and Sutledge water streams. Polyurethane bottles of 50 milliliter volumes were used for collection of water samples. The bottles were kept in a cool ice box for transportation. Initial testing included redox potential, pH, electrical conductivity, carbonates and bicarbonate con concentrations, and chloride concentrations. Field measurements of redox potential were made at the time of water sampling. Redox potential is the tendency of a chemical species to acquire electrons and thereby be reduced. Each species has its own intrinsic reduction potential. The more positive the potential, the greater the species' affinity for electrons and tendency to be reduced. 
similar to pH, but not exact. The carbonates and bicarbonate concentrations were measured by titration with a known volume of water against standard sulfuric acid using phenothaline and methyl red as indicators. The chloride concentration in water samples was measured by titrating a known amount of volume against standard N40 silver nitrate solution using potassium chromate as indicator. Now for the process of heavy metal testing. If you are in Chem 1128, this is very similar to this week's lab. The first step of the process is to filter the solution to remove any sediment. After this, the solution is acidified. This will separate the heavy metals into the respective ions. The, ion the ions are then analyzed through different indicator solutions, or by forming a precipitate and measuring the mass of the solid. Finally, a speciation model is used to calculate and express the equilibrium concentrations of the heavy metals. Now I will sum up the pages of results for the heavy metal testing. The heavy metal concentrations were high in all water samples. And zinc, cadmium, nickel, and manganese were predominantly present as divalent cation forms. In surface waters, the high level of heavy metals is believed to be caused by industrial effluents in the Buda Nala stream. In groundwater, significant amounts of copper and lead were found in the shallow and deep aquifers. The shallow aquifers contain a far greater amount of heavy metals than the deep aquifers. These results were taken over a wide range of area and water sources, giving a solid set of data. The results will assist in controlling the concentrations of these heavy metals in water systems through testing and regulations. As a project extension, I spent a day at an analytical testing facility. KB Analytical is located in Monville, Connecticut. This is the type of facility that would do the type of testing referenced in my paper of focus. The owner, Mr. Georgian, has many degrees, but originally graduated from the University of Pennsylvania with a degree in analytical chemistry. A degree in analytical chemistry teaches you to create different method methods and processes to identify specific chemicals. The business has serviced a wide range of clients from everyday house owners wanting their water tested to secretive governmental jobs. The hardest part of the job is keeping organized. Misplacing one bottle can jeopardize the whole set of samples. My trip to KB Analytical gave me a look at what an analytical chemist does. I don't believe this is what I would want to spend the rest of my life doing, but it was very educational spending a day in a lab. These were the sources used for my presentation. Now, any questions?